Casino, Riot released new Mordekaiser story, LeBlanc, Kiana, and they even updated the map with Ishtal, the new region. But for now, we have to scrap all of those videos, because Riot also revealed their new game, Auto Chess. They call it Teamfight Tactics. Now, I hate to clickbait, but when I say Riot is making a new game, it is a brand new game. They want to call it a game mode mainly because it is reusing League's assets, and because they are probably still working on an entirely different game, and they don't want people to think that this is the new game they've been working on for so many years. However, it is not anywhere near Earth, Nexus Blitz or any other game mode, so we may as well just call it a new game. This video will be split into two parts. In the first one I will explain what the new game is, and in the second part we will give Riot feedback because we know that they are still changing the game on a daily basis, and we discussed a few things on stream that could seriously improve the game. We know Riot is listening, so it would be foolish to not take this opportunity. So without further ado, let's start with what the new game even is. We could honestly just say that it is auto chess that is using League's characters, and we could just end the segment there. But it has more to it than you would think. If you have no idea what auto chess even is, Riot's official post explains it really well. You start your game on a playboard that looks similar to this. Before each round you spend your gold on buying champions that will fight for you, but you don't control them, they fight for you on their own, hence why it's called auto chess. Each round the champions of a random other player will be teleported to the other side of your board, and again they will fight on their own. That's the very core of this game mode. You buy champions that fight for you, and you earn gold by winning duels. The interesting part comes in when you realize that you can combine certain champion types to gain special benefits. Right now, all champions have their classes and origins. A class can be something like a marksman or assassin, and an origin can be something like a demon or a dragon. So by combining certain types of champions, they can buff up each other. On top of that, if you have three duplicates of the same champion, you can combine them to make a super version of themselves. And if you have three super versions, you can make an ultimate version. So because you can strategize around creating unique team compositions, and because you can upgrade units to be more powerful, this game has a lot of depth, but it is also very easy to understand, which is what most games are aiming for. Lastly, every now and then, there is also a special round during which everyone is teleported to the middle. There the players will be able to draft pick from a single lineup of champions, but the pick order is reversed from the current standing. So the worst player picks first and the best picks last. It is there to give the worst players a chance to make a comeback. The funny thing is that the picking order is not turn based, it is all based on timers. So if you are picking first but you take too long thinking about it, someone else might steal what you want. This is essentially the entire game. Hopefully it is not too confusing, because it is much easier to understand when you actually play it. In the same reveal post, Riot also talks about why they are even making teamfight tactics. Recently, Riot's been trying to expand beyond what normal league game modes could be like. Nexus Blitz is probably the prime example of this. Believe it or not, but Teamfight Tactics is still technically just another big exploration of what is possible. Even though this exploration ended as a totally separate game, within an entirely different genre. And it is not that surprising that Riot decided to jump into auto chess. Not only is it a super popular genre right now, but just like League, Auto Chess also counts as a strategy game, and all the similarities between League and Auto Chess make it easier to develop. Remember, the original Auto Chess is a Dota 2 custom map, which is hilarious because history is repeating. The first Dota spawned League, League encouraged Dota 2, Dota 2 spawned Auto Chess, and Auto Chess spawned Teamfight Tactics. Anyway, Riot even points out that a big reason why Teamfight Tactics is being developed is because people around their office sink an insane amount of time into Dota Auto Chess. They all love it. That's what inspired them to create something new as a game mode in League. Now here's the important thing. TFT, which is a shortcut for Teamfight Tactics, will launch on PBE later this month, in a beta state. So there will be a lot of bugs and things to tweak. But Riot is listening closely to our experiences and feedback, which is why I am making this video in the first place. Because I do have a lot to say about what I've heard. Then they mentioned that they are treating this as a real grown-up game mode. All capitalized. Which means that they will fully support it, and they will even have a ranked ladder. The full launch with the ranked features is planned for patch 9.14, which is only 3 patches away. And now to the final part of this post. 
Little Legends, a whole new customization in League. As we said, even though all the units of Teamfight Tactics fight on their own, while the battles are happening, you'll be able to run around the battlefield with your own little avatar. These avatars are called Little Legends. They will have their own dances, emotes and animations. And yes, while a battle is happening, you will be able to see the enemy's avatars too. So you can spam dance in their face. But here's the catch. You will get your first avatar for free, but additional species will cost you 750 RP. And D6 will be the launching little legends, with more and more joining them with each patch. On top of this, you will also be able to buy little legends eggs for 490 RP. These eggs can spawn a random little legend, or if you get one that you already own, it will be upgraded. As far as we know, there should always be three levels for each little legend. And in case you get to the third level, the eggs will no longer drop that legend. Lastly, your little legends will also join you on the Holding Abyss, so you'll be able to see them in other game modes as well. That's the entire post. The game should be up on PBE later this month, and the first real version should appear on live servers with the patch 9.13. That will exclude the ranked ladder. Now, if you ask me, I am in love with this idea. As someone who likes to play games solo, it's always harder to play multiplayer games. League of Legends is great, but I don't like the fact that if I screw up, my entire team will lose because of me. Teamfight Tactics gets rid of that problem. If I screw up, only I will lose, so I won't feel guilty about my mistakes. Also, the casual side of League of Legends has been starving. We got a little taste of something refreshing in the form of Nexus Blitz, but when Riot removed it, the casual side of League dispersed a bit. Teamfight Tactics will likely fix this as well, since it is one of those game modes that you can just jump into and chill. With that said, I still have two big issues with Teamfight Tactics. The first and the bigger issue is its monetization. Yes, 750 RP for an avatar is actually a good price. Yes, 490 RP for an egg with a chance to upgrade your avatar is acceptable. But if you monetize the one thing that could possibly become a progression system, you shoot yourself in the leg with a BFG. League of Legends itself has no progression right now. Sure, every number of games you gain a level that gives you a different colored border. You also get champions from capsules even though you own them all since 2015. And you occasionally get an emote showcasing your level. Which let's be honest, when have you seen anyone flash an emote to show the level of their account? People are memers these days. Everyone is spamming poggers. Because there is no real progression, or the rewards for playing are meaningless. Casuals don't really care about League as they used to. Casuals don't play for rank, they play for fun. But after a thousand games, that fun will simply disappear. That's why a lot of games have progression systems that encourage different playstyles. Sure, you can play the game the only way you like to play it, over and over and over again. But the game gives you an option to play it a different way. To earn special rewards, other players who don't do this won't get. For example, StarCraft offers you icons for playing different races. And even Fortnite has missions that make you go out of your way. This is a key difference. This is why the Odyssey community farmed the hardest difficulty of that game mode. We were encouraged to play special team comps like 5 Zixis or 5 Sonas. And we got a reward that other players who simply just play the game, even if they were super skilled, wouldn't get. Now how does this translate to teamfight tactics? Here is what I would like to see. Instead of forcing the players to buy the avatars, why don't you make the avatars rewards for playing? As I mentioned, progression systems are crucial when it comes to supporting a game long term. You can do this two ways. Option 1 is earning points by playing, and when you gather enough points you can buy an egg. If you let people buy the eggs and not the legends, you will artificially increase the grind time and make it a bit more exciting. Unfortunately, these random gratifications are a normal practice these days. That's because they work. But there is still option 2, which is a far better way to do this. What if you earn little legends by completing missions that support certain playstyles? What if you earn certain avatars by building specific armies? Riot never did this in League of Legends. If they forced people to play specific champions there, they could potentially ruin the game for other players. Here, that's not the case. If you screw up, only you lose. Teamfight Tactics could have its own achievements, and those achievements could grant you new avatars. Maybe if you like to play with a lot of sorcerers, you can unlock a little mage avatar. Having avatars bound to specific achievements would feel incredible. Imagine playing a game where you see the enemy player has a legendary avatar. 
if you let people buy these skins, it will mean nothing. But if you make people earn the legendary versions, you'll know your opponent means business. In StarCraft, when you saw those thousands of victory icons, you knew you were screwed. If there is one thing I would want to beg Riot to do, it is this. Give us hardcore achievements that give us unique looks. Don't let us buy pride and accomplishment. Now you may be saying, well, they have to monetize it somehow. And here is the second part. I am not sure how upgrading units currently works, but I hope that if you upgrade a unit in game, I hope it doesn't get a new skin. As in Normal Garen is tier 1, Dread Knight Garen is tier 2, and God King Garen is tier 3. I really hope Riot has a different way to showcase their current unit level, because here is where the real monetization could be. What if you could use the skins you own for League to change the appearance of the units in Teamfight Tactics 2? Suddenly, people wouldn't buy skins just for League. They would also buy them for Teamfight Tactics. This would be incredible, because people who already own the entire project line can start making project armies. But maybe they realize that they need Garen in their army. But Garen doesn't have a project skin, so they would use the Steel Legion skin to fit their army. With this system, people would literally customize the appearance of their armies with the skins they own. And I would love to see what skin lines the players could mix together. This almost brings me back to creating a custom Warhammer army. If Riot doesn't do this, they would be missing out on an insane fantasy customization. All of this was my first issue about monetization. But here comes the second thing I don't like. The flavor. Every time a game genre becomes popular, all the game copies scramble to add their own flavor to every piece of it. And after I watched Skara's video on the topic, I noticed Riot is missing out on adding a little bit of League's universe into the game. Skara revealed all the origins and classes Riot is planning for the units. Apparently, the number of both the origins and classes perfectly match the races and classes in Dota's auto chess. I assume Riot did this to have a starting point for balance, since they know it works well for auto chess. My issue is that Riot isn't really pushing their unique names. As you'll see, we can literally rename every single one of these origins to something that would give the game so much more League flavor. Demons could stay as demons. You can also turn them into Darkin if you want. Dragons can stay as dragons. Exiles can be Ionians, since their lands were obliterated by Noxus. And Riven and Yasuo fit here anyway. Glacial can be Freljordian. Robot can be Piltover and Zaun. Imperial can be Noxian. Noble can be Demacian. Ninja can be Kinko. Realistically, it could stay as Ninja. Pirate could be Bilge Red for a unique flavor name. Phantom can be Spirit, not Shadow Isles, since not all undead spirits are from the Shadow Isles. Wild can be the new Ishtal, Void can be Void, and Yordle can be Yordle. As you can see, with these new names, the game would instantly have so much more flavor. I kind of understand why Riot didn't go for using regions. Because even with this list, we still don't have Shuriemans, so they wouldn't be able to use Azir, Zerath, or any other Shuriemans here. But here's the thing, Riot, don't just follow a trend. If you need to make a new origin with a new passive ability, make it happen. Nobody says you have to stick with the 13 origins. If you use units that fit specific regions, you can teach your players more about your champions. Some may wonder why is Sivir in the Shuriman origin? And that's how you hook them for the story. A really awesome thing you could also do is that you could have specific champions interact with each other in risky ways. For example, Garen and Silas are both Demacians, so they should buff each other. But because they also hate each other, maybe they could lower their morale. Maybe because the two are Demacians, they gain a lot of extra damage, but because they also hate each other, that bonus damage will be increased at the cost of some of their health. Riot can honestly push so much lore through simple in-game mechanics. But that's pretty much all I have to say on this topic. I can understand if Riot doesn't change the names. But oh my dear lord, please change the monetization. Let us earn avatars and let us use skins in TFT. Now excuse me, I'll spend the rest of my day staring at this mole. Hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other league facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.